Welcome. All right, guys. I have uh, Zep, some people say it's my alter ego. Some people say it's my duplicate. Some people say we are uh, <laughs> children of the same mother from another world. That's yes. that. I, I, I mean, I've heard this like from since forever. No, like you know, if you come and see this guy, he's just like you. He talks like you. He's controversial like you. He's crazy like you. And then his name is Omar Boy. You know, then that's like he's my brother. So I, I keep telling people he's my brother. You know how successful people you have to claim them. You have to claim successful people. And then it is natural with the Robo Nation. Any successful child in the Robo is everybody's child. And Oma is, is a success story. Is, is the Nigerian story of the never say die Nigerian mentality. The trust to the world will bounce back and will do better than you expect. Write us off at your own peril. Uh, I have with me Oma Akatuba. You love to call him Oma Akatuba. His name is Oma Boy Akatuba. He's a father, a husband. Mm -hmm an entrepreneur of many cars and he is a restless soul like me you know we're like crap you can't keep us in one place but we don't pull people down we rather build people and so today we're going to have a chat and a chit chat and uh, they say boredom lockdown brings boredom but for me i find my creativity and i created this show where i chat with people all over the globe so Omar, you're welcome to the chit chat with me Thank you very much. Uh, great to be with you. Uh, you are like, uh, you are you are an elder brother. We are from the same part of Nigeria, so we are told to respect those who are older than us. And of course, those who are, you know, those who will look, you know, look up to in, in any profession. So thank you for having me on the Elegbeter TV. <laughs> a very fantastic uh, Now, Now, I need to say this story here because Oma is here. I've said it in a couple of places. Uh, I may have started a Legota TV and everybody, this is the guy they know, but Omar was one of those guys who came to my place a couple of years ago and told me, bros, if you do this thing, no, if you do one, no, people will do one, no better pass you. And I'm like, ah, man, the whole cost, this thing, that one, that one, I don't have the ability. Right? I don't have the funding. I was looking at my salary and Omar said something that the, he came with uh, this boy. That boy that he came to my place with, this fine boy that yes. I always talk tennis. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he said, and he said, bros, now from club that they enter that, so nobody, nobody, they get the money to build their state finish, but you best start to one plot of land before you know, you don't build that. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that, that change, that gave me paradigm shift. It's not, it's, it's got nothing to do with age, but it's the fact that a young man saw that he thinks that I can do something and I started doing it. And then I saw him do something similar across the Atlantic in, in, in the European show. And I felt very happy, you know, because what I saw him doing was like, okay, you know what? There is a future between the two of us where we can collaborate, where it will be there, I'll be here, and we'll hook up signals and frequency because believe you me, this is going to be big in the future. So, uh, Omar, there are challenges. Me, I'm dealing with electricity, poor internet, uh, lack of uh, views and the rest, and then paying salaries and all that. What's your challenge? You know, run, I mean, okay. you, you fired at Chalati, we're not forgetting <laughs> that one, though, but let's leave that one first. What's the challenge you face doing this job in Europe? The biggest challenge is um, economic challenge, financial. You know, we are in a business where we basically fund everything we do. Yeah. And uh, we have not been lucky enough like the comedians, like the musicians, yeah. who who earn, in my opinion, much more than they deserve. <laughs> yeah. So, so all of the work we put into what we do, we do a lot of intellectual work, a lot of research, a lot of physical work, traveling, it requires a lot of physical energy. Yeah. Planning, communication, trying to even get players to interview. And then you have to massage their ego. Exactly. So the, most, the biggest challenge is financial. Because there's nothing like doing what you love. But when what you love is not paying the bills, you ah. begin to have everything. Yeah, so, so you, you, begin, you begin to wonder whether you really love this thing or not. Exactly. Or, or if the thing loves you back. Exactly. But because it will amount to a disaster for you to abandon this thing that I've given you, we may not have seen the Naira and Kobo. I mean, it's coming. But we yeah. don't quantify it in Naira and Kobo, but it has done a lot to our image, to our life, to our entire being, you know, as human beings. If you mention the name Elegbeter, it rings a bell anywhere in the yeah. world. 
Yeah. You mentioned the name Omar Akatuba. We are in a digital age. You go on the internet, you put the name Pam Pam Omar Akatuba, you will see all kinds of links that are positive. If not for all of these, that wouldn't have happened. So that is the benefit that is not quantifiable by Naira and Kobo or Euro and Dollar, <laughs> as, yeah. as it were. So, but in all, like they say, we give glory to God, but my biggest challenge is financial. Because like you said, God has put me in a place where I don't have to worry about electricity. I don't have to worry about the basic, you know, the basic yes, things that I need. For this. Yeah, yeah, to carry out my job. Traveling in Europe is seamless. Transportation system is awesome. And there are different forms of tra travel that you can choose from. Europe is a place that, you know, that is comfortable for everybody based on the strength of your pocket. It's not a society made only for the rich. Do you understand? Yeah. If, you are, if you are in Europe, you want to go to Paris, you can go by bus to Paris for 40 euros, for 30 euros, for 20 euros. It's, it takes longer, but you will get to Paris comfortably in a very nice bus, you know, everything well done. You want to go by air, there are cheap flights. You want to drive your car, you are free to do that. So transportation, moving around is easy. And then access, being in Europe gives me access. I would never get being in Nigeria because you consider the logistics of, of leaving Nigeria to first to get to visa, and then getting flight tickets and then reaching Europe, it's a long process. For me, a game can be going on in Milan tomorrow and I'll decide to be in that game tonight and I'll still meet up. It's either I fly or I can drive my car. If I start driving now, I'll get to Milan by the daybreak. So all of these I've been able to you know, overcome. But that major challenge, which is not only, is not peculiar to me, I think it's a global challenge, it's financial. Okay, so some of us, you, myself, quite a few of us are breaking Okay, sorry, story. sorry. I think I missed something. Okay. It's also managing family life and business. You know, oh. I'm married to a European. Tell or I'm, I'm, I'm in a relationship with a European. Yeah. The understanding is different from the understanding of the African woman. In Africa, I always tell my, my girlfriend, I say in Nigeria, I can just say, darling, man, I need to hang out with the boys. So I'm coming back at 1 a.m. By the time I'm back, even if you are angry, you will still prepare food. Maybe you are in bed, but the food is on the dining. Yeah. I will eat, I will go to bed. But in Europe, it's almost, I mean, it's, it's possible, but it's difficult. Because in Europe, the understanding of the European people is that raising a child is 50-50 between the man and the woman. No, absolutely. There's nothing like, you know, yeah. you have to take care of the child. So it's the responsibility of the both of you. So because of that, it deprives you a lot of freedom like that you get if you're married to a Nigerian or you live in Nigeria. So managing family... But, but, but Omar, Omar yeah. you've been to my place. Yeah. I don't have that freedom yeah. that you think Nigerian men have. I no, don't have it. For you because you... Myself, because you Mita, Polo, Polo. Yeah. we don't yeah. have that, that freedom. I'm yeah. practically a house husband when I'm not going yeah. out. And yes, I know. Even if I want to go out, I have to explain myself. Like, uh -huh. you know, if I'm going to go to this place from there, from yeah. BGC, I'll go to Lekki. From Lekki, uh, there might be yeah. traffic and I'm coming back. And then she'll be like, uh, buy planting when you're coming back. Buy this one when you're coming back. And, yeah. and then I've got to be back. My sister's like, if I'm not back, my phone will ring. Babe, where are you? Right? Yeah. You know? So I'm practicing. And then when it comes to the responsibility of dealing with the children, I have three kids. Uh, one is going to be eight years old in a few days' time, and then the other one is going to be six, wow. six years old in, in next month. And, all six grown now. and then one is going to be one year by July 13th. And, you know, wow. all of this, because I didn't have a father growing up, so I'm always, like, I'm going to be in their life, I'm going to be there, I'm with them. Yeah. I'm, for as long as I'm alive, oh. I'm with them. Any social media that comes, I'm there. I'm going to be in their life. Like, that's, that's because you have decided to be, you have decided to be someone who has who who considers also the well-being of your wife do you understand yeah you have become a man who understands the fact that the woman also needs support yeah she does she does i mean not i can clean, wash plates clean the house yeah exactly not a lot of nigerian men think like this okay so omar let's come to our business most times when people go to europe when people go to europe yeah. like you are Either they say that they, they start to sell cars, they start to do business. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, for a black guy like you, I don't want to say some yeah. other things, press computer and the rest. I don't want to sell those ones. But 
yeah, for a yeah. black kid like you, it's not like yeah. I'm not saying you come from a poor home. I wouldn't say you all might come from a poor home because I, I mean yeah. I kind of know your family people, but you've been yeah. hustling since forever. You've been hustling yeah. since forever. So you went to Europe and you decided I want to be the only thing you took from Nigeria to Europe is your AIPS card. So yes, you went yes. to Europe like in Nigeria. And I said you are not a member of SWAN. You are not this one, yes. this one, this one. And you decided you want to be a journalist. And all of a sudden, you're going to Champions League games, you're going to club stadium. How easy it is to get access? Because what I'm asking is, sometimes you want to talk to Rangers players. And you say, okay, let me make it official. Let me go through the media officer and this one. And then it's mm -hmm. a problem. Recently, a player died, a Rangers player died. Yeah. And I said, okay, let me do a tribute because we normally don't do this. So, but let me do a tribute. It's not going to benefit me anything. People don't understand exactly. that. It is not every content you put on YouTube that you get paid for. So YouTube will just exactly. they'll tell you this one is not monetizable. <laughs> the people don't know that. So I was like, yeah. no, let me do a tribute. And then I start calling the Rangers team, the players, the coaches, just record a video on your phone and send to me on WhatsApp. Let the editing, mm -hmm. the rest of the work be my own. Everybody was acting funny. But then I look at you, and you could just talk to any player. It doesn't matter Zidane, Pep Guardiola, anybody. How easy is it for you over there? Well, to start with, from the let's go to the genesis. You talked about people leaving Nigeria and then they get abroad, they completely abandon their dreams. You get you right? Yeah. That is actually the most difficult part, to be honest. Because in Europe, you must pay your bills. In Europe, the bills don't say they don't wait. Or like in Nigeria, you can tell your landlord, oh God, when you know day this time. Oh. I've, I've had a situation in Nigeria where I didn't pay rent for six months. But in Europe, nobody wants to hear anything. You've got to work and pay your bills because that's basically what Europe is all about. Yeah. Working, paying your bills. So because of that pressure, people come here and then they, they give in to the pressure. And they're like, wow. I don't think I can continue to keep up as a sports journalist, especially at the intensity that I'm, I'm doing it. To be honest, the rate at which I travel, even my family members, yeah. my white family members, they're amazed. Sorry? Are you okay, I you? Go ahead, I can hear you. Okay. The, the rate at which I, I, I operate, the rate at which I travel, even my European family members are amazed at the intensity, at the energy, at the consistency in terms of how much I invest and all of that. So when you consider the, the financial burden of what I do and then being able to meet up with your responsibilities, it is very easy to just give up on your goals. But for me, the, the reason I came to Europe actually is because of this. I came to Europe so that I can be more relevant in Nigeria. I came to Europe so that my word can be sold on the internet and say, oh, my God. I think I've lost okay. you a bit. Okay, okay. Uh, your, your, your voice is... Hello, can you say something? Hello, yeah, hello, hello. So can you say something again? Hello, hello, hello. Okay, go ahead. I can hear you now. Good. Where do I take it from now? You said you came to, you came to Europe so that you can be relevant in Nigeria. Yeah, exactly. That is exactly why I came to Europe. I... I didn't come to Europe as an economic migrant. I came to Europe so that the brand Omar Katuba can have more value, can have more strength, can make more sense, can have some level of global reach. And to God be the glory that has been achieved. And of course, we continue to, you know, to, to develop that. So when I came here, I, I, there, there was pressure. You have to, darling, you have to walk, darling, because what you are doing now is not bringing, you know, enough money with the returns are not consistent, you have to find a job. And to be honest with you, what I did, for everyone to be happy, I got a job, but it was part-time job. Yeah. I was <laughs> working three days a week while I was doing Champions League and all my journalism activities three days a week. Then as time went on, I reduced it to two days. <laughs> <laughs> so I was working, I was working. Because by the time I get to that place, it's not me anymore. Imagine you go to a Champions League game all suited up, talking to Ronaldo, and the next day you're working in one place, like one regular guy. So it was two lives I had. I was actually working in a safari park, this um, holiday, park, holiday park, where you are. it's created just like Africa and Europe. There's a place called, it's a park where you have um, 
wildlife, you have lodges. They create it like yes. in Tanzania. Okay, like they, br they brought Africa to Europe, so you don't have to travel. Yes. So when guests come, I'm like a guide. So I tell them about, you know, this is Tanzania. This is, I drive them around and I tell them about these animals, where they originate from. I had to start reading about animals. I'm African, but I don't know much about animals. No, we are not. We are not. Because we were not taught. You see, Simon, knowing we were, we were meant to believe that all these animals are witch, they are evil. They are exactly. Witch. Exactly. <laughs> so I went to so Europe before, like, I fell in, before I fell in love with cats. Now I went to Europe back in the day before I fell in love with cats. Exactly. I used to think that pussy cat was witch. Exactly. And the white person believes every African must know about wild animals because they believe you must know about uh, lions, you must yeah. know about antelopes. Even my, my, my Europeans tell me more about animals than I know. I lived, you know how Lagos is? We're in like New, Lagos is like New York. Lagos it's is so like Western New York, yeah. that, Exactly. It's so westernized that there's no touch of Africa in Lagos anymore. Yeah. So I started to do that. You know, that was paying the tax, paying my bills while I was able to focus on creating content and, you know, building my brand as a journalist. It got to a point where I had to now basically start doing only Saturday and Sunday because Champions League games in the week, I, I calculated which one is important, Bundesliga game or Champions League game. Champions League game gives me more content. So I said, okay, Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, I am not available. So I go to work Friday to Saturday and then Monday to Thursday, I am somewhere around the world. And even sometimes when I had to go to Japan, in Germany, there's a system that is very fantastic. If you have headache, you go to your doctor. You say to your doctor, you have headache, he gives you a sick leave. You don't go to work for as long as the doctor says that you still get paid. Yeah. Because, yeah. Human, because human life comes first. When I was in exactly. Africa, they told me, human life exactly. comes first. The work is exactly. always going to be there, but human life, you need human to do the work. Exactly. They call it crank meldon. Crank meldon is like sick leave. Okay. So there was a time I was to go to Tokyo. I had to go to the doctor and told the doctor I was sick. <laughs> he gave me a leave. I submitted it at work and I flew to Japan. That was an offense normally because if they get you, you're supposed to stay at home. If yeah. you get a sick from the doctor, you don't go out having fun. The best you can do is to go to the grocery, but not like you are going to have fun. That means that you're supposed to work. You're not supposed to stay at home. So I went to Tokyo and yeah. then, you know, all of these were sacrifices I made, you know, so that I could remain relevant. Because, yeah, because if I don't do that, the essence of coming to Europe would have been defeated. defeated. Yeah, and to be honest with you, the entire essence of my life will be completely, you know, um, eroded. And, yeah, yeah when, when, and, you know, you know, when I see pictures and I see your work, I feel very, very me. For me, it's just pride because okay. I look at that that time that we had that chance, and you told me, bros, I won't move. You know, you went and came back. It's like, bros, yeah, I won't yeah, yeah. But yeah. I'm a lot more relevant in Nigeria than I am now if I move. Because exactly. naturally, we like people that are good working abroad. And I was like, man, yeah, get it done. But I was thinking, man, this Europe, make this boy not go lose. Because I like what you do as a media person. Yeah. Because it, it, it resonates with me, what you do, the way you talk. Yeah. It's practically yeah. the same way I talk. You don't yeah, follow of course. the status yeah. quo. You speak yeah. your mind the way you feel yeah. it. I mean, yeah, yeah. who wants best may best, but I know people fear yeah. Malufia Malushit, you know? Mm -hmm. but, but, but you eventually went and you stay on track. And I, a lot of time people take it for granted. People like don't know how difficult it is to go to Europe yeah. and stay on track, to stay on track. Yeah. Because people whose parents even have money to send them to school to Europe, they end up getting the hook up on crack, doing some dubious thing. God bless you. you that is there. You. Apart from paying yeah. the bills in Germany, obviously some people say I expect you to send money here in Nigeria. And I still do. I you do have regularly. To. You have to. <laughs> I know. And then you have to also uh, give to the gods. By the gods, I mean exactly. you have to do some giveaway on social media. Of course. Those are I'll, the tell gods, you, I'll, tell, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a story. The reason why I didn't do any social media giveaway is because I've done giveaway to people that I know. People Maybe. that I know who need help or who needed help. I don't believe in coming to do giveaway on social media when I have a friend in Wari who needs 50K. I have a friend in Okoko who needs 30K. I have a friend in Abuja who needs 20K. I will 
spread my money that way and I'll be satisfied. You know, that, I give uh, my money to people I have no idea about who could even be fake. You know, you know what? I've never done give away before, apart from maybe when I gave out the phone one time. But this yeah. lockdown, because I'm in Lagos and yeah. I saw how the lockdown went, and I know that something I've been poor. I've been I'm not rich now, but I've been really yeah. poor where we were begging for food to eat. Yeah. I saw how the lockdown went, that we were only focused on curtailing the coronavirus, which is not bad, though, yeah. which is good. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, in an economy where people don't have money saved up, people don't have work, people don't have unemployment benefits, people don't have anything, you say they should go and stay at home, don't go to their hustle, because it's not really work, their hustle, their yeah. small, small thing that brings in 500 year, yeah. 200 year, you say they shouldn't go out. People will be broke, and pretty soon get hungry. And once they are hungry, an hungry man is an angry man. God you know, you. so the table will turn. They can go into robbery. They can vandalize things. So I saw that coming. I started shouting. Thanks to somebody like uh, uh, J J J Judo Joy Gallo, who's mm -hmm. like, I mean, we spoke like back and forth. Like, man, he was giving as much as he can give. And I thought, yes. like, but well, if we give billions, then people will still the come. Uh, this exactly. early morning, this early money, it was uh, John Ogo that woke me up in the night, middle of the night, like, Baba, I see what you do, but I want to support you some more. I had to give 30 people 5,000 5, error. It was, wow. and you know the funny thing, on Twitter, I started feeling like it was wrong for me. Okay, I gave them and I keep saying, don't make noise about it. One guy now went and tweeted nice. it out. Like, oh. feeling is appreciating me in public. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's telling me where my own is coming. You know, there's this sense That's of excitement. When are you giving I, me I, my own? Uh, I can't have give out like five, five M or two M. He said he, he said he felt bad after giving out the two M because more, more people started asking, and it became like an entire. The me. manner in which people even ask the money is what hurts. Like yeah. somebody, somebody sent me a message in my. I don't know. I got my number, but WhatsApp like. Uh, Maybe they select people they give you. Oh, all of us they your uh, when things go hard you one day too. Maybe we don't get money. Oh. See, this guy I'll even tell know you. that. If this guy even know that I am depriving my children comfort to even do what I'm doing. Exactly. And I, I said because I don't go out, I don't have to eat. I'm running gen two for seven. I've not had lights since forever. So I'm running I gen know. like you know, sir. Wow. But I'm Wow. People don't say all the One guy sent me a message. Say, now nah, we they pray for you when you take your own TV and radio. You. you know what blessed boy, so <laughs> oh man. So I, I, I was so pissed and I replied him. I said, bros, it is time for you to pray this prayer for yourself. Then you get your own too, so that you're not gonna beg money. Exactly. Exactly. I'll tell <laughs> you, know? you, I'll tell you something. You said something that 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 is very instructive about the government, you know, and that's the difference. You see, you see, we have been observing lockdown here. It's getting to two weeks now, and I've never heard anyone complain of what to eat. You see, I even go out, I, I see shelves in supermarket empty. And I say to my girlfriend, I say, you people are lucky. Oh. You have money to even empty the shops, right? Huh. Because your government supports you guys. I even go to, in the lockdown period, I go to markets where they are not selling groceries, not food. They are selling garden stuff, like blocks, like yeah. cement, flowers full. People are buying things that are not essential. That means they have extra money. They have extra money. They, they, they have food to shop, so they want, want to happen, yeah. They want to get busy because they don't know what to do. Yeah. But they won't go buy a boat where they, they go river. Activities. In this period, I bought piano. I bought bicycle for my son. In fact, I started learning bicycle this period. We bought a trampoline for the kids so that they can get more busy in the garden. We have this money to do all this apart from food because we come from, we're in a country where the government supports. Listen, as I was saying, I grew up, I grew to a point where I had to register a company. Now I have a registered company in Germany. It's called small business, not PLC, not the high level. Yeah. It's called, it's like a trade. A call, I don't know what they call them for Nigeria. Business you know, registration, PLC. just business registration. Enterprise. You, just so that, yeah, enterprise, God bless you. So that they can tax all of my earnings because to God be the glory, things are looking good last year. I did a project for BBC. Good money came in. Um, the boy I did a story on in France, the young football fan, the BBC picked up that story, gave me a contract. I went to France. I shot a movie for the BBC. It's going to be out soon. So um, what the government did is that because of the lockdown, they knew that small business will be affected. For example, I can't do anything now. I can't yeah. travel anywhere. Yeah. I can't go and create content that I can say, okay, oh, come and buy. Oh. 
I can't. So what they have done is they have given support to small businesses. I will not say how much I go, but Matthew. No, you don't I have to say it. it. No, Amma, you don't have to say I it. It's not a funny it. thing. My business is a small business like your own. Yes. I've yes. not gotten a dime from anybody, no sponsor, no advert, no, no, no back. Exactly. Inside that small business, I am supporting citizens who 90% of them don't even watch my channel. Do you understand? 90% uh, yes. of these people don't watch my channel. They are supposed to be responsibility of the state. There is a slum near my house. You've been to my place, and so there's mm -hmm. a slum near my house where the people that they drove from Uturubame came to stay there. And then yeah. I sometimes you just coded me by like rice, put in container, go and give them to eat. And yeah. these guys don't even know whether Ilego TV exists. Exactly. Me, that is a small business, nobody's looking out for me. Yeah. I will pay for internet that will not work half of the month. I will pay, I will pay for lights that I will not see. I will run generator, my generator will pack up. Somebody, I will still be on the road. Policeman will still try to harass me. Like, okay, the other, I was going out this morning to go and buy fuel. And policeman said I should identify myself. I brought out my card. And it was like, the first thing was like, small boy like you see you. Yeah, you'd see me. <laughs> and I said, excuse me, how old are you? He said he is 39. And I said, you are 39 <laughs> because you wear police uniform and you're standing on the road under the sun. You're calling your senior small boy. Yeah. I am 42 years old. My younger brother, I said, I get two people where senior you. But because you wear police uniform, you call me small boy. So because my face no rump, Or because yeah. I'm not smoking, boo. So it was like, oh, why are you talking like that? I said, but that's, that's, that's where you see it. If you're 39, I'm 42, and you're calling me small boy. It's an irony. But exactly. I mean, I have my friend in the US, my friend in Ohio. Like, she says she doesn't go to work, but they give her $1,200. Exactly. And then I have another exactly. friend, I have another friend in Texas who has a small job who they gave yeah. $3,400. You see? And then I'm here, like, see, let me, let me tell you why your business actually needs more support from the government. It's not even because of you, but the people who depend on the income they earn from you. There's Kale Jaye. There is, I see a lot of these guys. There's this guy, your presenter. Yeah. These guys will feed their families. This is exactly the time that they need to support you so that these guys can feed. I was listening to radio yesterday and they said, you know, because of this lockdown, some organizations are now beginning to do delivery. They weren't doing it before. You come to their shop, you buy. Yeah. Now they have to set up a delivery system. They have to employ maybe a driver. They have to yeah. get a new car. And this part, the, government, the government gives them support so that they can expedite this action of delivery. But you know when we talk about it, somebody told me that, eh, Daffy, where you don't go self we they always talk this. And I said, well, <laughs> I'm not fighting the government. I love the government. I love Nigeria. That's why I packed from Canada, come back no, to no, Nigeria. No, but you do. You My, do. You do. I love Nigeria. I, lo I love this country. I believe that. I, I tell people most times that if I want to leave Nigeria, I look, how much did it cost me to set up this? You, you've been here now, over 11 oh, million years. How much did it cost me to go to Europe with my family? Exactly. How we left down 3 million. I don't do Europe. We don't do Europe now. If I never go to exactly. mainstream Europe, I'd be there Sweden, I'd be there Norway, I'd be there Denmark. Of course. You know, those small, small places. I'm going to live yeah. my small life. They work, they drive tractor, work for yes. farm. Are you see they, see, they do my thing. I'm going to earn good money. My children will go exactly. good to school. After of a couple course. of years, they're going to be citizen. Exactly. You know, you know, people think we don't have all this in plan, but yeah. you don't see the support. And then yeah. people come on social media, drag you, say all sorts of things. The yeah. worst ones are those ones who have made themselves slave to pastors. I'm sorry to say, but yeah. I'm not saying. Once it's you say, once you point out something that these people are spiritualizing to the cost you. better problem, they start, they start fighting you. Now, one of the things that I want to ask, you're in Europe. Do you sometimes yeah. hear European, because European, my friend will say, if you want to see intelligent conversation, go and view European uh, social media space or American social media space. They are still crazy people, but you see a lot of intelligent conversation. Do you sometimes see this entitlement that we have here? Do you sometimes see it over there in the European space? Like they are, they are begging people, all these footballers are begging their money, like come and give us this, come and give us that, now we make you, now we support you. Do you see that? Do you see that happen? Never. In fact, the worst thing to happen to a person in Europe is to beg another person for money. I've had situations where we had no money. My girlfriend 
never asked her brother for money. Her brother is well to do. I said to her, ask your brother. She would say, never. I said, well, which kind of life is this? For my dad, if you don't get money, this closest, <laughs> the best option are your blood. So, so is the way, is the that way, is how it is. It's the way they are raised. That's you know it. me. You know what I mean? If they ask, had me to ask person for something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like if I ask you, Sha, I mean, it means a whole lot. You know what? Exactly. But, but, but you see, you see, if you want to advise a young, I have one protege, one small boy, you mm -hmm. know him online, Timothy Deimbo. I think he has the potential to be good. Only that for me, I think it's too soft. If you want to survive in this our industry, there's a bit of stubbornness that you need. It doesn't have yes, that. You have to a I wish I can beat stubbornness into the boy. He's good though. But that's not that stubbornness, and I'm worried <laughs> because it looked like a potential person that I will employ in the future. You know, so if you want to advise a young kid like that, I mean, what from your experience in Nigeria and your experience in Europe, what's the kind of advice you give to him? Well, I'll tell him to first thing first. He must first believe in himself. He must he must believe in his um, ideologies. He must as usual, develop himself. You yeah. must invest a lot. Look at books around you. When you talk, someone hears someone who is widely read. I listen to a lot of your pro production. I like your production. I listen to them. I listen Thanks. to your presentation. Thanks. I like the fusion of pidgin English in a very intelligent manner, not like some unintelligent, un, 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 unfunny people. So he must develop in himself, in himself he must, he must believe in his ideologies. He must be stubborn because for the positive reasons. And then yeah. above all, he must look up to you and listen to your counsel. Thank you. Uh, now, now, there's one thing, there's one thing you face, and I faced it, Toby, I think what yeah. you faced it. A lot of people faced yeah. it. Uh, and by saying this, I'm not saying all the old guys are bad, though. There are the yeah. great guys in the industry, people who yeah. saw me and gave me support. Mm -hmm. Mumine Alao, the Jamoto Ibo, the late Dejitunumbu, Shala Ipe Kuhn. These guys just saw me. I don't even know what I, Temisa and Okomi, but they were good to you. Yeah. I don't know what I did to make them love me, but they just love me. I mean, yeah. I'm not a Lagos boy. I'm not a Lagos boy. Yes. So yes. I, I, yeah. I, they don't owe me any love or likeness. They don't yes. owe me. They're not like me before. That'd be a problem. Yeah. Okay? But then there are those ones too. I don't want to give them opportunity in my, in my, in my platform. I don't want to mention them. But there are those ones who who say this thing? Yeah. Uh, I I suffer for twenty years before I make it in this industry. You think you are just coming here and becoming big boy? You know how do we try not to repeat that for the generation that are coming? Because people didn't give us a helping hand. A lot of people didn't give yeah. us a helping hand. Yeah. 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 Shino Keleji, yourself, uh, Temisa Nokomi, you know the other names that I mentioned. One word that give me a hand, yeah. like support me. Sometimes you see me yeah. go tripping and. Like Mumina Allah will just silently call me and say, I know what you're going through right now. Control yourself. Don't get, don't, don't say things in anger. It will pass and you'll be fine. Like when I got fired in 2017, it was one of those persons. The me where you know, yeah. the things were for talk on social media. Social media for break. I for break internet yeah. fast, keep condition. Because I was 150% right. So yeah. people be like, let's burn this house. Yes. But you know, when these kind of people talk to you, listen. So, how in your own space are you reaching out to the ones that are coming? There's a guy called Tosi Holmes. One small boy called Tosi mm -hmm. Holmes. I think he's mm -hmm. also doing very well. Is it yeah, I see him on Twitter. intelligent? He tweets a lot. How do you mm -hmm. do you sometimes go out of your way to like reach out to these guys and say, I think you should do this, or I think you should do this? And how's the reception when you try to guide these people? Yes, of course. I get messages every day from young people who want to be tutored, who want to be mentored. And I do my best to give them counseling, also give them connections that could give them opportunities where they showcase themselves like we did. But I'll tell you the truth. I think that in our own little way, we've done things differently. There are a lot of names that we can mention today that will say, ah, this person gave me my first opportunity. I will not mention their names. They are, they are, they are all over Twitter. How some of them came and some people told them to go and learn mechanic. One of the names you mentioned. Yeah. And then I mean, it's, it's, it's not even something we, we, it's not a secret. He also talks about the Toby Adekpoju. Toby Adekpoju, I'm not, I was talking about it now. Yeah, when he came to top radio, he was told to go and learn mechanic that he wasn't good enough. 
And he said, he came to me and said to me, what do I think? I said, I don't believe in such statements. Every one of us have something in us. And if you can harness it, I think you can grow. You know what you do? Focus on the Nigerian Premier League. It's an area nobody wants to touch because it's not easy. It's not commercially so, viable. And it's not commercially viable. It's not colorful as well. So if you go into that area, you are going to be able to create value. And then I put him on my show on Eco FM. And when it's time for him, I say, you know what you do? Write everything down, read it verbatim. I'm not saying you can't speak English. That way you can build confidence. And when you do this regularly, it becomes a part of you. And then you just start to flow without paper. And the rest, like they say, is history. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's one of the reasons why for the rest of my life, I won't forget people like, uh, uh, Ama Ignis, Temisa yeah. Nokomi. And when I mentioned Temisa Nokomi, people were like, why are you talking? Like, I reverence Temisa Nokomi. Yeah. I reverence him. Like, yeah. Temisa Nokomi is a god where I am. Like, I mean, that's why yeah. I say it. I don't care what anybody says. The kind of guy who just pick a random stranger and say, guy, come to ITV. That platform was very big now. That was like the sky. That was, the biggest, that was the biggest platform. No audition, nothing, nothing. Come it was a platform all of us wanted to be on. Because you if you are good at what you do, you need such a platform. Yeah. So I always respect him. And it also was driving me to say, you know what? People help you to get here. Also create a platform to be there for other people. But I, Omar, how hard it is for you to... Because you've interviewed everybody in yeah. a short time. <laughs> you yeah. and Shino Keleji have interviewed everybody. Yeah. On yeah. the planet, in or in your space, in your football yeah. space, yeah. how easy is it for you to reach both the Nigerian players and then the other African players and the rest of them? How easy is it? Well, um, initially it wasn't easy uh, because then I didn't build the kind of name that I have now. But now it's getting. Oh. I'm last you again. Technology is good, but it also has its difficulties. So, guys, uh, Omar's uh, side, I don't know if you no, my internet is still okay. Uh, Omar, can you hear me? Okay, so uh, I was actually trying to get him to say to me how easy or how difficult it is to talk to these players and get them to agree to do interview because I know it's one of the most difficult jobs. If you're a reporter in Nigeria, you know that that's one of the most difficult things. Like, okay, I've been trying to track somebody like Kofono Dodan for since forever. Let's have a chat like this and a few of these players in the Nigerian league. But then it has not it has not come true. So it's not as easy as we all think. Uh, I'm going to try to get Omar Katuba back in and see. But if he doesn't, uh, well, this is where we would uh, call it a day. But then the truth is, most times it's not as easy as we all think. And uh, we think, okay, you just show up there and then you get it done. But believe in yourself, like Omar said. And it's what I've always tried on. Believe in yourself. Give it your all. Tell yourself that when I, when, I, when I do what I'm doing, I don't say I'm doing it because of the fans or because of the crowd. No. I'm representing my late mother. I'm representing my late father. I'm representing my stepdad. I'm representing all of my brothers and my sisters. And so anything that I do, I don't want to do it and mess their image or their personality up. If I can make those people proud, I am okay. You might say it's a short expectation, but that's the biggest crowd in this world that you can impress. Once you can impress those people, you have done absolutely well. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where I'll say thank you to Omar Akatuba. It was a wonderful interview. He's a, he's a great brother. He's played a great role in me setting up a Lego TV. It might be my younger brother, but he's played a great role in me setting up a Lego TV. And I appreciate the work he's doing all across Europe and across the globe because he's gone to Japan and some other places. And this is just the beginning for him. And for those of you who are coming up, people like Omar Akatuba are good ambassador to look up to. And I want to beg the young people. It is good to drag people on social media. But you see, I've seen people, somebody who dragged me after one or two years came for audition. And I saw him and I just remembered him. And I, I reminded him, you are the guy that was insulting me on social media because I have an opinion about a football club that you don't know. Now you want to work for me? I can't employ you, unfortunately. And he was begging and, you know, long story short. So those kind of things are things you must avoid. And I've seen in this period, too, where people, out of their kindness, go and give out food, like bread or 
the other woman and give her food that somebody was complaining that there's no meat in it. And then this is, this is not fair. This is not right. We should be grateful. We should learn an attitude of gratitude. Learn to appreciate the little you have. If you don't want it, if you think, oh, you have food, you don't want it, leave it for people who have, who, who have need for the food. Let me tell you a story. When I was growing up, uh, I think it was about seven or seven, eight, between my seven or eight, seven, eight or nine years, we were so poor, we couldn't pay us rent to throw us out of the house. And from that moment, we were living in one plywood house somewhere in SSA Road in Mokos Street. It was a time we didn't have food, we were not eating for two days. My mom was looking at her like, we're going to die. She was heavily pregnant. She now asked us to go and uh, go and get uh, food. I, I tried to reconnect with her, you know, and she said we should go and I should go and I should take the plate, go and get food for us to eat. And you know, I went out to go get food to eat. Okay, Oma, hold on, I'm telling them a story. I went out to go get food for them to eat, for us to, to eat. And how did I go out? I went out to go and beg somebody food. When I got there, mm -hmm. this story is always something that people should take serious because they always think that. When somebody give you something, somebody I gave somebody ten thousand the other day, and it was like, "Baba, I just ten, I come on ten thousand, you give me, come on ten thousand. Meanwhile, I borrowed the money to give to him. He was, he said his wife was in the hospital. I gave him, he was asking for fifty k. I had only ten k to, I didn't even have the money. I borrowed ten k to give to him. And so I went to beg for food for us to eat because we're not eating for two days. My mom was pregnant, was not feeling fine. My younger ones, all of us, were just looking like, you know, scavengers. And then we went, I went to beg food. The, the food that they gave us, you know this in worry, if they finish mm -hmm. eating in the evening, they don't wash the plate. They'll put it in a big rubber uh, basin mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then keep it there. Tomorrow morning, they'll wash it. So that money was when I went to make for food. You know all those leftover eba that is inside that place where they don't turn wash and water put and everything? Mm -hmm. It was what mm -hmm. the, the daughter of the woman, I still, I mean, yeah. I don't want to mention her name here, but took those eba, put it in cellophane. Open pot of wow. soup, serve. It was banga soup. No meat, no fish, nothing, nothing. Just serve the liquid. Just give me, take with anger. As bad as that, I cried from that place. It was Iroba Street, number seven, Iroba Street, to number 26, okay. SSA Road. I cried. I still feel like crying right now. I cried and I went back home. But I didn't even tell my mom. I got home, got a firewood, put water in the pot, put the air bar inside another cellophane, wrap it, put it there, warm it. And then add salt to the soup. We ate. The most important thing is that we had food to eat that day. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if it's sour food or not rotten food. Wow. But we ate that wow, day. Amazing. Look at me today. All of those children from that from my house, they're all graduates now. Some mm -hmm. are married with children. Amazing. Like we're living better than the people who treated us like that. So this exactly. Nigerians, they give you something and you start insulting the people that give you. This sense exactly. of entitlement, you know, I remember when uh, Akel Abi gave her money here. Yeah. And it was sad, it was depressed for how people yeah. responded. I saw some, exactly. somebody that these people that are saying this now will block rule, this man will not do for other people again. Genuine people that have exactly. it. So when you somebody give you something, please, if you not say you don't need that, say you get, leave other people where you need them. Make them exactly. wait till they do for them. Don't be the one that block rule. For other people. So exactly. my, final, my final question I ask you were uh, explaining something. Please, can you just yeah. go ahead how difficult and how easy it is to yes. get these players? Yes. So, so like I said, um, I, I built, you know, my profile, you know, slowly. And then um, at first, when I didn't know the players that much, when they didn't know me that much, I used to communicate through the club. And of course, as a member of the AIPS, it's a card that is respected across, across the world yeah. because the clubs are in relationship with the AIPS. So when, they, when you request for an interview, they want to see your AIPS card. The moment you show an AIPS card, they see that this guy is a bona fide journalist. And then they ask the player, do you think you want to talk with this person? The player has the final say. And in my case, what I notice most players do is they go on my Instagram. And then when they go on my Instagram, they see me with people who are actually bigger than them. <laughs> and then they are like, I think he's welcome. He's a guy that I would like to talk to. And in many cases, players have told me, I like what you do. I see you at Champions League games where I don't even see any African journalist or Nigerian journalist. And I'm very impressed. So it's for me, it's even a pleasure to meet you. So right now, it, is become, it has become you know, very, very easy 
because of the profile that I have built. Even the clubs, I've become quite known to clubs because of the involvement, you know, with, you know, in Champions League press conferences. I remember going to Amsterdam with OJB, this young guy in France who is, yeah. you know, growing as well, who also gave a platform. Yeah, OJB is doing, OJ doing well. I was thinking of chatting him up a couple of days ago too. He's doing well. Yeah. Yeah, I gave OJB an opportunity that he <laughs> that I would never forget. Took him to Champions League games, even without him being, you know, really bona fide, you know, member of, of, of the AIPS. So when we went to Amsterdam, when we got to the press um, office to pick up our accreditation, the guy said immediately, ah, Omar Spurs, welcome. OJB was, he was amazed, like, wow. So you have become so recognized by clubs. I said, yeah because of the work that I've put yeah, in. So yeah. right now it has become like a guy, a face and a name that is recognizable. Okay, so finally, before I let you go, there's this idea now that this generation believe that success is an overnight thing. You just think something and then it will just, by the next money, it will manifest. Omar, you, you, you are going to become a bigger success, but right now you are a success. Yeah. Did this success yeah. happen overnight? They say to achieve overnight success, you need at least 20 years. <laughs> so, so you've already answered my question thank you very much Omar and my regards to Figa and Nelson and your lovely girlfriend and please don't stop people will thank still you. drag you I mean I saw people dragging AY the other day and I was like really? of course that's the whole AY yeah. so people will still drag you there is this thing I always say to myself they drag Jesus or no worry exactly. you'll you be nobody exactly they exactly. drag Jesus where where they even wear shukuchuku for a head. <laughs> nobody has to organize that thing. Nobody send you. So That's true. just do your work. Talk the one way you know and leave the rest. If people That's say really they good. want to insult you, leave it like that. So okay. thank you very much for but your time. Before you go, before yeah? you go, I want to ask you. Let me interview the interviewer now. Okay. <laughs> What's your take on Amaju Pinik? Amaju Pinik and the the whole approach to Gennot Hall's renewal. I've seen some some clouds being inserted into his contract. What, what do you think? What do you make of it? Uh, I'm a Jew Pinik. The you know you know how ten years ago there are things that I used to do that I don't do anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I could fight yeah. naked ten years ago. I could fight naked in the streets. I don't. Yeah. I don't care. I could punch you like. Yeah. Now you could insult me. I just walk away. I just. Yeah. It's called maturity. That's it. And I know I'm a Jew. Like I've known I'm a Jew like all my life. Now I mean from about yeah, oh, worry, yeah. I'm worried about yeah. Trump. Too. And I yeah. expect that yeah. some of these youthful exuberance that worries Amaju will die exactly. down because Amaju have seen money, Amaju have seen fame, Amaju have yeah. grown. But yeah. you see, this is this is my take about Amaju. I think Amaju have a certain inferiority complex that he did at grow. Yeah, I think it's a mixture of inferiority yeah. and superiority complex. So he starts using superiority complex complex to to try to outgrow it. So, yeah. how much you have yeah. this, the need to talk? Yes, and I to need be relevant. To talk. Yeah. First off, this is how contract negotiations are done. I might be wrong, I'm not the most educated, but you have a coach who's in contract with you for three or four years. The contract is running. You have a company that agreed to pay the salary. All of that is locked down. The coach is doing well. What you need to do is to do appraisal Call his agent or his lawyer. Call the coach, his agent, and his lawyer. Say, coach, it is time for us to renew. You know, the contract is running out. Normally, you do that six months to the end of the contract. The contract is running out. Uh, coach, you've done well. Not like you've not done well. That is, if you don't want him again, no. you've done well. Not like you've not done well. But there are areas you need to improve. And then uh -huh. these are the newly improved terms of the contract. And then the uh -huh. coach will look at it like, ah, no, this is not improved. This is actually dropping. Yeah. This is not right. This is not yeah. right. And then because of that six months time you gave him, the coach already knows that, okay, let me test the water. Are you guys sticking to this? And if you say yes, this is something that will happen over threads of mail, back and front. Nobody in the public will know. This is how corporate organizations will respect you. People will know that you know how to do business. And then, and then these threads of mail, as it's going back and front in this six months time towards the end of termination of the contract, the coach now realize that, oh, I'm not going to work here. The coach will not give you in lieu of notice, like, I will not renew this contract. But the only condition 
upon which I will renew the contract is if you do this, 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 this. Some of these things you say I should do, I will do them. But I also have my own conditions. From last time that we worked together, this, 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 I need them to be improved on. So if you're not replying, because you have like a couple of days to think about it, talk to your people, your team, it's not just you, talk to your team, and then you reply. When you reply, and you find out that there is no headway in this, it will not tell you, in lieu of this, in, in a month's time or three months' time, depends on the clause you put in the previous contract that if you want to terminate, you have to give me three months' notice, 90 days or 60 days or, you know, like this to terminate so that there is no penalty, there's no fine. It will not give you a notice and say, I don't think we can work together. So you will not have the window to go and start looking for a coach because coach is not in shop right that you just gonna pick one and bring to your house. You go and negotiate for a coach, bring the coach. If I'm wrong, correct me, I'm not be age. I feel not know too. Well, you see, as, did you see me clap go for you? Then did you as, see me applaud you? As Jonathan is going, you will not make so that corporate because corporate image is key. You will not make an official statement and say. We want to thank Genotra for the service he rendered to us. We wish him oh well God. in his future endeavor. And we hope that if there is need for us to work together again, we'll work together. But going forward, Nigeria has approached, negotiated, and we are unveiling our new coach. Maybe not today, but we'll set a date for the unveiling. But so on and so on, we will, the name will be announced in a couple of days' time. And then you set up the stage for the new unveiling. Wow. Corporate Nigeria will respect you. The international corporate bodies will respect you. People who want to come into Nigeria, you know that some people want to come into Nigeria to do business. They are looking, what do we latch on? Do we invest in football? Do we invest in basketball? Do we invest in this thing so that we make our name loud? And say, oh, man, this NFL, they know how to do this. Let's go and do business with them. You know, the way they do their transition of coach and all this unveiling is fantastic. If we do business with them, our logo will be there. Everybody will see us. People will come to you. But when I'm as you just maybe sit down, one beer parlor, and I'm sorry, if you are journalists will always shook you with what it's what yeah. they are trained to do, even the trained and the untrained one. They will always see you, bro, Safa. Sometimes when a journalist is hailing you, he defy your downfall. Sometimes when a journalist is insulting you, he defy your reaction. Yeah. It's what we're trained to do to get reaction from you. But when you are intelligent, there is a guy, there is a man in Nigerian football that people didn't really like. His name is Sunduka Arabo. He doesn't react. You're trying to shoot him. He knows he's intelligent enough to know you are finding reaction from me. He will not answer yeah. you. When you're not even prepared, he had gone back to profile you. He will call you maybe dead in the night. Where you, you cannot record him, where you're not prepared, he'll take you unaware. Yes. And educate you. You will go from his enemy to being his fan. That's <laughs> that's maturity. That thing Amaju doesn't have. See, and it's God bless. funny because he's been a commissioner. He's been a state, a, a club a chairman, a state every chairman. This whole period should have taught him. But it also tells me that the political system in Nigeria does not educate people. If you are a tongue exactly. before you become a politician, you will still stay in politics for years and come out and you still be a tongue. There is you know no they say power, they say power, power corrupt. Absolute power, absolute corrupt. power corrupt. Absolute power corrupt. So, you know, those yeah. things is what, what happened to Amaju. Is he a good guy? But when you become a public office holder, being a good guy or not being a good guy is no longer the question. Yeah. Are you competent enough to deliver administrative excellence at that level? Yeah. It is yeah. the reason why they skim in out of calf. He was talking yeah. more than he should say. At the yeah. National Cup in Egypt, he had already said things he shouldn't say. And he forgot that those boys were in the corridors of power. They had whispered to Ahmad Ahmad, talked to people, and they said, man, flush this guy out of the toilet. And that's exactly what happened to him. So I think Even I might just within the NFL. Yeah. Even within the NFL, there are people who believe he talks too much. Even ordinary NFL staff. You understand? So I might just should learn to live talk for journalists. Now we get talking. It's our job to talk. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something you said that I love so much. You said I was applauding you. It's exactly the same thing I said. You know, like you said, we think almost alike. It's exactly the same thing I said on, a, on an inter Instagram live video today with Mark. I said, you see, if you want to do a thing like that, you must make an official statement. You must communicate officially. I'm sure Gennot Roy hasn't been communicated on the terms of his new contract. And then he goes on the media. I'm certain. 
Exactly. And you know and some, got... of, some of the things that they wrote in that, when I saw it, like, it must stay in Nigeria, it must stay yeah. in Naira, it must develop and nurture the league. The Nigerian league, yeah. Who, who, who do us? Who cost us? Exactly. Exactly. Where in the world does a national team coach nurture or develop league? So what is Sheudiko? How come Amaju does not send that kind of memo to Sheudiko? Exactly. So I don't get it. That's one. Then the, the, the one that pisses me off. He must end in Naira. Does Exxon Mobi pay the ice matrix in Naira? Exactly. Does Shea pay exactly. the ice matrix in Naira? Exactly. Tisalat, uh, 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 do they pay the ice matrix in Naira? Meanwhile, exactly. the same Nigeria is asking Super Sports to pay live broadcast right in dollars. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand how they think in that place. Then, then what matters was when you want to pay Super Eagles, you say you can't pay the Super Pay them in dollars. In Naira, they must be but you pay them in dollars. Exactly. So oh, then, thank you. So what a German who does not have a Nigerian passport, doesn't have a Nigerian wife, doesn't have a Nigerian children, <laughs> have no business here. You want him to end in Naira. If they're not, how come I didn't think about all this? How come I didn't think about all this? If they're not oh cost us, eh? The Babala away the press are button. You see their life somewhere. I'm wow! Even the Brazilian league. What, what, has... The new word I want to use is F O O L. Amaju is a... <laughs> oh, Jesus. Matthew, even as big as the Brazilian league, the Brazilian national team coach is not instructed to 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 pick players from the league. For as what, big man? as the Brazilian league. For what? You know that league is very big. As in big enough to transfer players for over forty million dollars, fifty million dollars. Exactly. They don't. Co- uh, yeah, see, you, you, a coach is not in any way obligated to pick players based on your instruction. He's obligated exactly. to pick players based on what it takes to work for him. Because if he does not deliver, you will fire no, him. Exactly. So I will look for the tools that work for me anywhere I can get it. Not from a league that goes off and on. A league that exactly. the players. Oh, let's not. Let's not. Let me not even go there. Let me not go there. Thank you. All thank right. You thank you very much, much Omar. We will keep talking oh, anyway. It's our country. We will keep talking. I will keep pushing the buttons. People will not yeah. like it, but we will have having our say. Uh, I enjoyed it. But there's a few who watch this interview. This is two brothers talking, and you, now you know why I say we're reason I like we're brothers, and it's always going to be like this. We love this country, but it doesn't mean that we won't speak when things are not going well. There is nothing okay. personal to it. I always say that if I'm a Jew, she would equal, they are not in public offices. I will not question how they run their private businesses. Exactly. It is because they're in public offices that I can have a say because what they do mm-hmm. directly and indirectly affects my business and a lot about the image of this country. Because yep. of that, I have a say on it. But for those who will take this video and like try to do I service, I'm a Jew, no, sir, yeah. I'm a for a front. He know, yeah. sir, I go talk her for a front. It'll not be a problem. Yeah. And some of you don't know. No, but, but, but you know what you did? You actually gave him a valuable advice. He doesn't have to pay that for is if you take I, was, I was going to ask you, all these things you said, does he not have people around him who are this intelligent? No, the who people, the people around him, the thing, about, the, the thing about running around a foolish person that I've noticed, especially in this Nigeria, is yeah. you, you start, your IQ start diminishing. It's like That's very watching, cool. if you watch 10 bad movies, uh, 10 bad yeah. movies, your IQ will drop. Very true. So, when you sit around intelligent people, sit around uh, Unuka Rabo for a month, you start thinking creatively. Because Unuka Rabo will not make you feel like it's supposed to give you money. It will start telling you, what can you do to make the league better that will also better your life? Exactly. Well, if you hang around uh, I'm a Jupinik, probably the conversation will be like, what, which baby will arrange on me? Uh, the, I'll carry you go, which will tell. You know, when the conversation becomes mundane and stupid and is repeated, your brain will shut down. Absolutely. The human brain is independent. When you feed it rubbish, it goes off because the brain has expectation. So those Absolutely. people there, because they want to save their stomach, they want to secure that $200, yeah. $50. That yeah, I, cannot, I cannot go to a co hotel on my own. My chairman will carry yes. me go. So those mm. things I can't go. I can't go for matches alone. Uh-huh. I can't go on to my own. alone. I must enter. So if I talk too much now, this man will come to avoid me. But me, I don't want to go for matches. I want to build a business. Yeah. Like Zamaj said exactly. something. See, yeah, without due respect, I, I, I will respect like Zamaj for the rest of my life. He may have done some things yeah. that I don't like to me, but I respect him for the rest of my life. He said something one day we're having a meeting, and he said this to, to us. He said, "Some people don't go forward, cop. They see the struggle to pay rent. 
him not go anywhere. <laughs> him not go anywhere. See where he did. So it's not about how many World Cup you jump into a plane and go to. In 2014, no disrespect to anybody, in 2014, when we were in Brazil, Nigerian journalist Amigari took to the World Cup. We abandoned in Sapolo. They spent two sleeping in my <laughs> floor of my room. It was, my room. It was in Russia. They couldn't they pay for them. in Russia. So, they drove them out. Because their ticket were, was booked to the end of the tournament. Nigeria went, no say no go reach finals. They book your ticket to the end of the tournament. By the time Nigeria lose, Megari carry money goals to another hotel. You became stranded. Chema, <laughs> Chema, Chema, number nine, they go again. Because this guy is not <laughs> break the SIM card. Go look for another one. So you're stranded. You start sleeping in bus park, motor park. <laughs> Is that the kind of journalist I want to be? Oh my, which FA, which FA chairman they carry about? Not be travel, you need travel. <laughs> so, so that kind of person cannot speak up to the FA chairman or tweet. The chairman, this is what you do, no good. You start a chairman, correct? We, correct. we, find we talk about the rot in our profession. How a lot of our colleagues have sold their souls because of plane tickets. Because of of two hundred thousand naira, and you know the you funny see, thing. Okay, gross. you sell your soul, you go to the World Cup. You don't bring com- content. You take selfie. How can I go to the World Cup to go and take selfie? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Man, There's so much, much to talk about. It's a long, it's a long way to go. We but we owe it to people, and that's why I respect people like them, the Jomoto Ibo. You know, those ah. guys are legends. Those guys are legends. Gross. Gross. Bros, even though even though they are feeling the financial pressure, but they, they remain steadfast. Oh Jesus! They, 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 their image is untouched. They are yeah. legend. The, the yeah. I, mean, I hear I, mean, I hear people. I hear people saying they are not making money. I don't want to be like them. I hear some of our colleagues. There are some of our colleagues who are more commercially oriented. No, they are, they are more interested in how much. They, they are about the looks. They want to look rich when they are not rich. Yes, yes. They don't believe in work. They believe in jumping. They go, oh, I want to make money. There's no money without process. Okay, in Nigeria, there's money without process. I understand. But in the real world, there's no money with all them Bill Gates. There was a process. Mark Zuckerberg, all of them. Let's even leave them Mark Zuckerberg. Let's talk about media moguls. All the Larry Zamoji. There was a process. A process we he didn't get there overnight. He walked. He walked. Well, people, people don't see it like that, and it's sad. I mean, we can say this forever, but we must say it. It's our yeah. profession. We must say it for it to be good. We're not the, yeah. the watchdog, but I hate it when yeah. some of this is... Okay, let me give you a typical example. Yeah. In the last four years, once you, you work and work and work, you do a watchdog for them, next thing, they will appoint you media officer. So one day, I... Yes. They'll put you in the committee. In, in my own niceness, because they called me like three times, they called me to a hotel, like I should name any national team that I want apart from Super Eagles, I'll be media officer. Yeah. And I said, I'm not interested, I'm building an empire. Okay, so yeah. one day I said, does the national teams even need a media officer? Why don't you use exactly. this opportunity? Build a media directorate, get more equipment, more cameras, more writers, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. NFF website will be active. Anybody that wants story from the, the team will go there. If you spend time doing profile for our under 15, under 17, under 21, exactly. under 23, the female team, exactly. stories will fool that website. Monetize exactly. the website on ad, Google AdSense. God and bless then you. Be doing short Man. video for your YouTube channel. This is the modern exactly. age. You don't need all that. Exactly. Anybody that wants story from the NFF, go to that website. All this, I am calling the media officer. No, it doesn't work that way. There is a media directorate, a, a, a media unit. That's just fact. We know we'll be invited, the old, old process. For, I mean, another example is how in the Nigerian Football Federation, you have only Demola Alajiri handling media. Only Demola Alajiri. For, for God knows how long, forever. I see. Hold on. And now they've added, they've added Ayo. What's that guy? Yeah, I don't, I don't that yeah. yeah, they've added him. Who's doing a great job. But, in fact, he has brought... No respect for him, yeah. He has he has brought a breath of dynamism. Fresh air. He's brought dynamism, dynamism and youthful, youthful touch, you know, to the whole team. But it's still not enough. No, Ross, wait, Ross, wait. Let me finish. You see, the media department of clubs and and football federations in Europe is an office. It's like a media company on it. So it's like Cool FM. Absolutely. They have a they have a department with like. 10, 15 people only in people, the media. People that handle graphics. 
before it's they digital. short videos. When Those they score media. a goal, when the team score a goal, you see the video will just pop up on that player. This has been designed before. I work in, I do media, so no. This There's a guy in charge of press conferences. There's a guy in charge of interviews. On match day, you see, you see all of them well dressed. But in Nigeria, you have only two people in the whole media department of the NFL. In fact, one person. Because at the end of the day, we know how things work in Nigeria. Yeah. It's just one person. Aya is doing the work, and the other person is just the, is the ogre. But not ready. Which is crazy. Man, we can talk forever on this. But thanks, I, I would, I would I'll buzz you again. We'll have a conversation. We'll continue this conversation. Are really good. But thank you very much. Thank you for your time. That's your wife, uh, your, your, you. your children, and everybody. Keep the flag flying. You. We really appreciate what you're Thank doing. You. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Take